Sure enough, undisputed with Skip and uh, Keyshawn. Keyshawn doesn't like us anyways. And what are they talking about the entire segment? Titans getting Sneed for a third-round pick. Well, they don't even really mention the Titans. It's all about Kansas City. Why Kansas City would do it. Why Kansas City's better off. I mean, that they don't have to pay the guy, and they'll have just some random guy step up. That is what they talked about forever. And I'm like, good gosh. And I'm like, this is probably going to be like on every single station. So I got fed up. Sorry, I did. I, I, I have emotion. Okay, I'm not a robot. Okay, I, I'm just not. I, I have a lot of emotion. So again, I just get fired up and I move on. But that's kind of how the show is going to work tonight, everybody. We are going to expose some uh, mock drafts. And then we are going to talk about realistically what Rand wants. And I, and I think there are some key things we need to talk about. I know there's a bunch of different rules when the NFL, I know they're going to play on Christmas day on a Wednesday, which like, are you going to have the buy or are you going to, with it being so late in the season, maybe not, but are you going to have those teams play on Thursday night and then play on Wednesday night? There's a, there's a whole nother dynamic. They showed the chiefs. So I'm assuming the chiefs will actually be on Christmas night. So we'll see what happens. Lumen, he says, thank you, uploader. We appreciate you, man. And two weeks before the draft, I'll just make all those videos public. But for right now, just doing my work, doing my due diligence, uh, doing my study, and that's what I do. I study and I, uh, I try to get and obtain as much information as possible. This guy has the receptions for the Titans remembered, memorized. Okay, ask anybody without looking at their notes and their piece of paper if they have it memorized. We'll see how many know. But again, Nick Westbrook, Akine, 28 receptions. Kyle Phillips, right? 15 receptions. Uh, Traylon Burke, 16 receptions. Chris, even though he's not on the team, Chris, big, big play, uh, one play in a game more. Uh, what do I say? 22 receptions. All right. Nick Westbrook, Akina, maybe I already said that. 28 receptions. See, I got, I'm, I'm just a sponge of knowledge when it comes to the Titans. Just can't get enough. But if you are interested in the joining the 145 club, definitely let me know. Those guys are awesome. They've supported me through some tough times on this network. And some of you have no idea what upload went through over the last couple of years. But the ones that do know, they're like, yeah, I, I, I totally appreciate the fact that he made some time for us on Sundays to talk Titans and, and really put a lot into that and not just, you know, disappear forever. And I tried to do as much as I could, but I do appreciate you guys. I really do. All right, so here we go. Our first one's going to be from Tannenbaum from ESPN. Why I put stock into this one over some of the other ones is he used to be a GM. GMs, you guys know this. If you do a certain craft, you know more about that craft than anybody else. So, for example, shout out to the welders out there. Seriously, shout out to the welders. I will say my school district does a lot with welding, right? We live in a, um, I don't know, our town is... Where I work is, it's, um like I said, it's not a huge town by any means, but, you know, you definitely got some hard workers in, in our town, and um, we got a, a plant full of welders. Welding is very big in the community, so kids will go to school to get a lot of opportunity in shop classes and then take those skills and into the welding community, and they do quite well. You know, I even have kids come up to me and tell me they make more money than me welding, and they're still in high school. I'm like, shout out to you, man. Good for you, right? But do you have a YouTube channel? They should because one of the guys that used to work with me has a YouTube channel centered around like welding and stuff. And you know how many subscribers he has? 220,000 subscribers. The guy's like 70 years old and he just started a YouTube channel. And he's like 65 and it's just blossom. So shout out to the welders out there. But you, you get my point. Like I know nothing about welding. I did not take any welding class in high school. The best shop class that I ever took in high school were probably considered home ec, which I don't even think you consider that uh, shop class. And then the second one would have been industrial arts. I got to make my dad a bookshelf. I mean, that bookshelf was so great that I made my dad, and I put so much effort into that. I remember the teacher's name. His, name, his last name was Hurley, and he, and he gave me like a B on it. Man, I put everything into that bookshelf. It was a nice-looking bookshelf. You had to like Put it together. You had to sand it. You know, you had to cut it. You had to do all sorts of fun stuff with it. I'm glad I didn't cut my hand off. But the bottom line is, I gave my dad that. I was so proud of that. And guess what? Guess what? Like 15 years ago, my dad's like, hey, uh, you know, being a teacher and stuff, he's like, hey, uh, 
you need a bookshelf? And he gives me the bookshelf back. It's still in my room. Shout out to my dad. But uh, we're, we're going to start with Tannenbaum. Again, Tannenbaum was one of those guys, too, that was saying, hey. And, and this is why I don't give him a lot of stock on ESPN, a lot of credit. But I will say this. He was one of the few. And, and I got behind this, actually. I did. He was one of the few that said, Ryan Tannehill, when they made that trade, he knew Ryan, obviously, he probably worked with him, right? I think he was GM for the Dolphins for some time. But he said, listen, he is a guy that can push and possibly take that starting job for Marcus Mariota, and he should get every opportunity to do it. That's what he said. And guess what? You're right. Marcus Mariota didn't work out, got replaced in Denver week six after throwing his first two interceptions for the year and looking like ghost man out there, literally going right into sacks, like literally going right into sacks. He was so like spooked. But the bottom line is Tannenbaum was one of the ones that said, hey, Tannehill deserves a chance. And Tan- if it wasn't for that move and that switch, we don't make the playoffs. I- I'm confident. And then we don't even win a playoff game or get to where we almost got to the Super Bowl. Team came super close. So Tannenbaum's going to be our first. And, and we're going to go through this and we'll talk about it. All right. So you guys leave your comments. And this is where the big screen works out better because you can see it better, but we're making the best do. And you know me, I'm going to put a lot into it. And here we go. So Tannenbaum's first five. I think you're going to see something on here. And that's what we got to talk about. It's got Caleb Williams going to the Bears. I think that's a no brainer. If you're doing any mock drafts and you don't have Caleb Williams going to the Bears, you are ridiculous. As the Bear fans would know, they say, you are Devin Hester, you are ridiculous. And again, Floyd Reese of the Titans wanted to draft him. Jeff Fisher said no, and they didn't take him at all. Exactly. I love my, myself some Floyd Reese. And 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 I, again, prayers to his family. I know they miss him dearly. I know Jared Stillman misses him dearly. And I'm so thankful that D- Jared still makes him a part of the show, even though he's not around anymore and he's watching from above. So shout out to Jared. I know a lot of you get on Jared and that's fine. I do too. He's got some wild takes and some craziness, but he is a Titans fan. He is a part of the community. And like I said, he really did a bond well, and he's a big part of the Floyd Reese family. So shout out to him for consistently bringing him up. Um, Number two, Drake may from uh, North Carolina going to Washington, Again, they have Marcus Mariota. Poor guy's probably going to start and then get replaced again. But, yeah, Marcus Mariota back up. Drake May coming in. And then Jaden Daniels at number three with New England. This seems to be repetitive. One, two, three, every mock draft you look. But what's in, And we're going to get to that pit bull, too, because I saw that as well. He's talking about the Titans and what they're predicted to win, according to Vegas. Uh, you guys should be buying, buying buying that let's go buy that now again I can't tell you what to do but you need to be buying that that is easy if you're old enough that is easy money easy money so again Tannenbaum got uh, uh, Jaden Daniels going there at number three I think from LSU then we got number four this is the biggest fool's gold in America right now okay if you like gold And you know the difference between real gold and fake gold. Shout out to you because I probably don't. The only thing I know about fake gold is back in the day and say by the bell, Zach Morris had his guy come in and and get class rings. And Zach from Saved by the bell got some, got some gold rings. And um, I remember Max, remember Max, that guy, he was like really, really wealthy, but he was considered a dork and all that kind of stuff. Well, Max bought two and, um, Bottom line is it was fake gold and it kept showing up green. This JJ McCarthy thing is the fakest thing I've ever seen. And there are so many people. Now we got national. It started as kind of a, Hey, well, this could happen. They could move up to eight. And then it just keeps going on and on and on. And, And a lot of people are putting a lot of stock into JJ McCarthy for the fact of Jim Harbaugh. And that's where they're going. And it's just rising and rising and rising. I will be shocked absolutely shocked if J.J. McCarthy gets in the top 10. I will be shocked. If it happens, shame on me. But I, again, I'm just not buying it for whatever reason. I think this is the biggest hoax right now with the NFL draft. Almost as big as hoax back in the combine when y'all kept telling me, oh my gosh, and then YouTube video after YouTube video. Hey, the Titans, they got, they, they put everything out there. They're going wide receiver. Everybody's talking wide receiver. Come on. And that's the reason why they did it because of Tannenbaum's mock draft. Seriously. 
because number five, the Chargers, which could go in any direction. They don't need a quarterback. Okay, they could go in any direction in the NFL draft right now, which makes them a dangerous wild card. They could trade out of it. They could take a tackle, right or left side, probably more left. They could take um, a defensive guy here from uh, Alabama. They could the, the Dallas guy. They could take uh, any wide receiver they want, according to the Tannenbaum's mock draft. I mean, they would have. I mean, if they want neighbors, they could go him. You know, we already mentioned Turner. They could go Harrison Jr. I mean, they they have the best spot, the best spot outside a quarterback. Now they're not if if the Cardinals stay with the quarterback, even though they got Murray. But if the Cardinals stay a quarterback there, you know, maybe it it takes some things away. But it, seriously, if if Arizona takes somebody else and one of these quarterbacks is still sitting there, then the Chargers become a prime spot to move up. Probably not going to need to move up to the Titans because you know they're not taking a quarterback. And then the Giants, I mean, maybe you trade up with the Giants or maybe the Giants do something. But, again, Atlanta taking a quarterback in free agency – and Cousins really kind of took the Titans out of being a prime spot to trade up. But this is the five, and this is where I'm going to start really the show because I think it's a very important thing to discuss. The Chargers going at five. So I'm going to switch gears here because I'm going to go back to the poll question and then come back. But this is where we're really going to start the discussion of the show. So shout out to you guys again right now. We have 105 votes already for this show, and I appreciate it. I appreciate all. We're going late. All right, we go late. That's what I can do. I, I'm sorry if you don't like me going late. I'm sorry if you don't want me go. We try to be respectful. We try to be respectful to the West, West Coast. So, again, I realize that uh, TA goes live at 8 o'clock. I try to be respectful. I don't want to go live when he goes live, so I'm, I'm out of respect. Right? I'm letting him do his thing. Shout out to him. He does an amazing job over there. I mean, my gosh, he's just destroying YouTube Shorts lives. So you're talking about, Wow. Loves the Titans. Shout out to TA. But again, he goes live at eight. I'm sure there's more guy. Um, I'm thinking, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, locked on. I mean, he's always got his premiere set at five. I would never go at five. Okay, I get it. I would never go at five. You guys, he is one of the hottest channels out there in the Titans universe. Shout out to him. Is it okay to say that? Is it okay to say we all live in our bubble? We all assume what we think we assume. We never really think about the things that possibly could happen that could derail everything, right? You don't think like that. So when we look at the the mock drafts and stuff, you're thinking, well, Alt's just going to be there. Alt's just going to be there for Rand. This is, this is why this needs to be brought up. Rand is a guy who has shown. Now, he doesn't make the best, like I'm saying, he's not like, I can't say he's the best decision guy out there yet. I mean, it wouldn't be fair for me to judge him positively or negatively after one season. But in year two of, of what he's done in free agency, dude, I mean, he's he's been killing it. Okay? So he makes a trade. We're worried about the knee from Sneed. Sneed ends up getting – you get him for a third-round pick. You flip-flop sevens. I don't care what Keyshawn says. I don't care what Keyshawn says. Keyshawn's saying we're in the wrong because we had to pay him. Well, Keyshawn, if you were a player – Back in the day of his age, at 27, coming off a contract, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to be paid, Keyshawn? Wouldn't you want to be paid the highest? So how can you knock the Titans for wanting to invest in a 27-year-old cornerback who played out of his mind in 2022 and played really, really good last year and played amazing in the playoffs, other than the Super Bowl, which is kind of hit or miss? Okay? How can you say anything? Oh, I forgot. My, my bad, Keyshawn. The Tennessee Titans. That's why it's what it is. If it was the Dallas Cowboys, heck yeah, man. If they would have re-signed him for a massive deal and gave him what he wanted, 22 million. Oh, Keyshawn would be jumping for the hills, baby. $22 million well spent. If it was the New England. This is the sad part. And you go back and watch it if you don't believe me. Now I'm getting fired up and I apologize, right? This is where we need everybody in the Titans universe to be on the same page. Instead of kind of going back and forth with it, just be on the same page. We're on the same team. He brought up, Keyshawn brought up the Patriots more than he did than the Titans. 
That's telling you something. And the Patriots had nothing to do with the trade. No. So again, back to the poll question. Who did you want? Who did you want? You guys are saying uh, you got 113 that voted. Awesome. Says who do you, who do you think ran wants? I'm sorry, not you. Ran, ran. We want to know what ran wants, right? 17% Turner. Okay. Uh, 17% uh, neighbors, the wide receiver. Joe Alt, 59%, and Fashanu, eight. Now I'm shocked about that because when you hear a lot of people talk, they go back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth with Fashano and Alt, Fashano and Alt, Fashano and Alt. You guys in the poll are telling me 59 to 8. That's a big deal. So, Rand, what do we know about him? Rand, Rand's winning a lot of you over. Some of you are on the fence with Rand. Not coming over with that much experience as far as the GM world from the 49ers being fourth or fifth in command over there, getting this opportunity. Shout out to Amy for investing in him and giving him an opportunity because that is well deserved. I'm so sick of people with the retrend guys. It retread guys, it's like, well, I've been GM for 50 years. It doesn't, I mean, sometimes it's the younger guys. Sometimes it's the guys that never get a chance who have the fire and the burn and the passion to make real changes. It's not, I love the old guys. Trust me, I'm getting old myself. But you get my point. So let's go back to Rand. So what we know about Rand in his short time in Tennessee, Rand wants something, he's going to get it. And, and I love the fact, again, he's getting a lot, a lot, a lot of love tonight. Shout out to him. Maybe you guys can go tell him, hey, tighten up. He'll be like, who's tighten up, Luke? But, but it's fine. I get it, Okay. But Jared Stillman's the one that made that point, believe it or not. And Patrick Mahomes, and, the, and I do got to shout out my Chiefs guys. There have been, and I'm going to do a video on them and give them some love here. You, we cannot get upset with Chief fans. Chief fans on this network have been amazing. They have been amazing to come in and give us their true point on Sneed because they would know more than anybody. And again, back to the Dillard thing, I don't need to go down there again. That's the thing. That is the thing. When you look at this channel and you look at what's going on with the comments, read them. You don't have to agree with all of them, but when you got Chiefs guys coming in here and they're giving you their take, almost every single Chief guy who's come in here, whether it be live show or whether it be a comment, have given me positive vibes on Sneed. They said the only time they don't want him to succeed is when he plays the tight. But they love the guy. He won them over. That is awesome. That is awesome. So let's get back into this so-called mock draft. So again, back to, again, if you're just joining me, like what's wrong with this eye, I have to keep saying even more than to say subscribe because of the fact that, yeah, it's, it's an issue. Okay, I got some contact stuff going on. I had to put on the old glasses. Plus, you know what? It's all right. Rand wears glasses. So I think I can wear glasses too. So here's the deal. Um, Tannenbaum. So why brought up the point, and Jared brought it up too, but why brought up the point is if Rand wants his guy, Rand will go get the, the, the guy. And what you find out in a lot of times in the draft, and you hear a lot of experts, Floyd Reese has said it many, many times, guys that have experience, especially GMs or whatever, you always hear it, don't you? Go get your guy. And from the talk... It seems like, and, I, and I'm very, they didn't even go to his pro day, everybody. They didn't even go to his pro day. And, and Rand kind of blew it off and said, well, we didn't go to Skaronsky's pro day either. But I think they're trying to spin the wheel there. They're spinning the narrative that maybe they're not as interested as y'all think they are. Again, it makes perfect sense why they brought up wide receiver all day at the combine, doesn't it? It makes perfect sense. I tried telling you guys that. Oh, my gosh, wide receiver. No, they want a left tackle. That's what they want. And I'm thinking they want Joe Alt. You're thinking they want Joe Alt, 57% of you. So here's the thing I didn't think about. So going on Tannenbaum's mock draft, so I'll put this up there one more time. This is his top five. Joe Alt going to the Chargers screws everything up for the Titans. Screws it all up. So my question to you is, does Rand panic? Because GMs will do this, everybody. GMs will do this. They will panic. 
And I think John Robinson panicked. I do. I don't know if John 100% wanted to trade A.J. Brown, but I think he left the door open. And on draft night, he had an opportunity to do it. He panicked. Time was going, whatever, and I think he jumped on it. And you can tell on Vrabel's expression he was not happy about it, and he walked away. That was kind of the breaking point. I don't think it was the end-all, be-all. I think Amy would have fired him on the spot or the next week or whatever. But again, that was a big deal. That was a big deal. So Joe Alt going five. My question to you is, does Joe Alt trade up? I know it's crazy. You don't have a third-round pick. You don't have a third-round pick next year. But if he wants his guy and he starts to play the mind games like the Bears, oh, my goodness, for crying out loud, do you remember the Bears trading up for Mitch Trubisky? A lot of you probably don't remember that. The Bears were number three in the draft. San Francisco was number two. And San Francisco talked the Bears into moving up one spot, giving them a third-round pick and some other stuff, to take Mitch Trubisky. And afterwards, the 49ers said there was nobody interested in Mitch Trubisky and they weren't going to take him. And the Bears totally got fleeced on that one. I just hope that's not us in this draft. I don't think it's going to be, but does he get talked into taking, get, he loves Joe Alt so much. And, and again, for some of you, and I promise you I'll get to your comments now, but for some of you, you got to realize Middle linebacker, maybe some guy gets cut. You can plug him in. Safety, there's a dime a dozen out there. I hope we get Simmons, but there's a dime a dozen out there. You could also plug in a, you know, you have Hooker, he's a vet. You could plug another guy in there. Maybe from the draft. Corner, we pretty much got corner taken care of. Maybe there's one spot or two to add, but for the most part, you, you got your three positive corners. Probably need a fourth. Not Trey Avery, but again, you can find that guy anywhere. Defensive line, you need some help. But again, defensive line, I feel like, you know, they still have Tier Tart out there. If all else fails, bring him back. Right tackle's a concern. But you still have two right tackles on the roster that could duke it out. And, you know, Nick Petit Frere was pretty much garbage last year, but I kind of told you he was going to be garbage for missing those games, and it's not as easy. If you go back to the 2019 season, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Roger Saffold didn't even play with Lawan because Lawan missed the first four weeks for PEDs or whatever the dude was doing. But my point is Roger Saffold really suffered coming over for the Rams. He was an amazing left guard, but it took him time. He wasn't used to playing with the guys he wasn't used to playing with. And when Lawan got back, it took time. Okay, week five wasn't as easy as we thought it was. And week six was a disaster in Denver. Again, you, it took time for that line to come together. Still had Ben Jones and, and all that, and, and I think we still had Conklin and stuff. But when we look at Joe Alt, does he trade up? I, I don't know. If he loves him and the GM philosophy is go get your guy, if he's sitting there at five and Chargers will deal with you to just go grab him, will be interesting. Basket King, what's going on? Football, you know exactly what I mean. So here's the rest of it. Ooh, I left it out. Oh, I love it. I love keeping you guys on the edge. So neighbors would go to the Giants. The Titans got somebody. Dallas Turner, then Mar uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Bears. No, I mean, it's Bears won the draft, hands down. Top two picks last year with Anderson and um, C.J. Stroud. We, we know the Texans won hands down two and three. It, if this plays itself out, bringing in Caleb Williams, already the stuff that they did, bringing in Keenan Allen, having D.J. Moore, and then going out and getting Marvin Harrison Jr., the Chicago Bears, Kevin Byer on the defensive side. The Chicago Bears, we play the Bears, by the way. That would be a scary. But, hey, we'll take our no-fly zone against them. We would match up pretty well against the Chicago Bears as long as we could probably, hopefully, stop Swift. But if we do that, bam, we're, we, we are going to be able to hold up against some of these elite passers in the league or, or receiving course. So, shout out to Rand for making that happen. But, again, Fashano going 10. So, again, who are you taking at seven? Well, Tannenbaum's going to throw something out there, and we're hearing more and more of this, and it's scaring the crap out of me because this is something I don't want. This is something I'm afraid of. At, picks, at pick 11 last year, okay, at pick 11 last year, we took Peter Skronsky from Northwestern 
who was a really good left tackle for the Big Ten and and Northwestern. And it's not like Northwestern is like an elite team like Ohio State or, or go to the SEC with Alabama or Georgia. Like Northwestern, I mean, they, they, they would lose to Duke for crying out. No, that's not a shot at Duke. I apologize. They're still in the Sweet 16 for basketball. But for their football program, it's got better. But again, like they're not a shoe in to beat Illinois, and Illinois has been terrible at football. They're just they're just not. So again, when when we think of you know Peter Skaronsky playing left tackle and doing really well against teams like Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, whatever, and we don't even give him a chance because supposedly he's got small arms. Did you, did you watch left tackle last year? Did did you watch that? And and. I mean, I I just still cannot believe. And I get it. I got guys on my own side on the network that say, upload, you're crazy. You know, you, you can't play him at left tackle. I'm just saying, you took him at 11. If you're going to go back and do something like that again at 7, I'm going to be pretty ticked off. So the question is, you passed on Fashano, Tannenbaum did. So who are you taking? And it's not Dallas Turner, okay? Who are they taking? Right tackle. Right tackle. J.C. Latham. Again, I don't not like the player. He's a massive, mauler, right side, right tackle. Fine. Seven, way too high for him. I don't care. I don't care what you guys try to talk me into. Him going at seven and, and passing on Turner, passing on Fashanu, Passing on Harrison Jr. makes freaking no sense to me whatsoever. And again, I trust Rand to do the right thing, but I'll be honest with you on draft night, I'm going to be furious. And again, I was furious when they took Isaiah Wilson. Me and NGB Talk were live, and I threw my water bottle across. You can still find that on YouTube. And I was so upset when Brian took him the night before, and a lot of you boycotted Brian and his channel because of it. And we didn't want Isaiah Wilson. We kind of knew. I didn't know as much stuff, but my gosh, that was just oh so upset about that pick. That was a right tackle at 27, folks. That wasn't a right tackle at 7. So, again, I know there's a need at right tackle, but this is why the trade-up theory should not be just thrown to the side. And I know a lot of you will be like, well, you can't. You trade it. I, I don't care. That left tackle is a such an elite position high need that thing could be for the next 10 years and the more and more I dig on it the more and more alt fits that category you want Will Levis to be able to pass the ball then you need to draft a guy like Joe Alt if you want Derrick Henry back to run the ball then we can talk about maybe bringing somebody else in to play left tackle and then going out and getting them all for right tackle things are changing just watching it in class again for geography Captain Phillips Times are changing, I think he says, Captain Phillips in the beginning. Big world's turning. Times are changing. Times are changing with the Titans offense. Times are changing. So we have to think like that. And that's why I know for a fact, Rand's got to protect Will. He wants Joe Alt. He can bring up all the stuff about wide receivers. He can not send anybody to his pro day. He can blow it off the best he can. Tannenbaum call, call this front. And said, hey, maybe it's not even the Chargers that take him. But that could be a trade-up spot to take him over us. So keep that in mind. And draft night, don't get mad at me if Rand does trade up to go get his guy at some point. Again, we don't know Rand's thoughts on it, but it looks to me. It would make sense to me. You can't just randomly go out and get a left tackle. You just can't do it. So let me get back to you. Uh, Tannen bum says Titans raw. What do we got here? We got a super chat from Leon. Shout out to Leon. So we got Leon that says stealing Harrison jr. Would be such a coup. Can you imagine how annoyed Colts fans would be? Hey, Colts fans will say this Leon and shout out to the Colts fan. I Anvil's a member and uh, he's one of my favorite Colts fans. Uh, we love bring the juice podcast for the culture. We love those guys too. But those guys would simply look at you in the eye and look into my bad eye and be like, hey, we're going to sweep you anyways. Like Colts fans sometimes can become very delusional what they really are with expectations. 
And they've not done anything. And I think Rossi shared this out with the 33 club or whatever, giving us both C pluses. Are you kidding me for free agency? Like, Rand doesn't deserve a C plus. He deserves an A. Get out of town. Mr. Producer, Titans are taking Harrison if he's there. Titans should draft a quarterback, knucklehead. It's awesome. I still love the Shrek thing, though. It's going to be Faga, uh, MH. I'll take him. Hey, Ray Lewis is subscribing. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, if you subscribe, let me know. Appreciate it. Tighten up, Leon. D. Henry did a podcast on a pivot. Just dropped today. Shout out to be French. Tannenbaum, former GM for a reason, says Thomas. Uh, we got Tighten up Rossi again in the house. Wouldn't mind Titans picking up Arnold from Alabama. And D says, uh, for all his work, Levis got a hit. Uh, and then he said, did you see? <laughs> That's why I got my eye going on over here. For Vince Young, I feel bad for Vince. Vince kind of like wasted all his money uh, going to the Cheesecake Factory, and he was spending like ten. I've heard like ten grand a night at the Cheesecake Factory. I mean, what the heck is he buying for ten grand? I mean, the Cheesecake Factory is expensive, and I know that cheesecake has went up. I think like a piece of cheesecake is almost like thirteen bucks now. It's ridiculous. What is he doing? What is he doing? And he was actually on Titans Weekly's podcast. Now I feel bad for Titans Weekly. Because it's like they went all out for Vince Young. And then Vince Young, like, again, I don't, talking to those guys, I don't think they were offended or anything by Vince. I mean, just having him on was awesome. But Vince was like, he was in and out of the discussion. And then, like, he's out front. He's kind of, like, moving around the house throughout the whole thing. And it's just like, can't you just give the guys, like, 10 minutes of your time straight up? I mean, but, again, we would not pass on Harrison in any scenario. Wrong is blank, says Jared. This is why Tannenbaum is not a GM anymore. Mitchell says there are too many right tackles who can be serviceable. I agree with that. Chill mode says I'm not putting it past for them to draft Bowers. Uh, Raven says I think we should take Marv in this situation, but the Titans apparently aren't are high on him or high on Lengtho. And that goes to my point. A lot of local radio is talking about the fact, even nationally, there are some people out there that have him higher than Joe Alt. But remember, you have to realize what you're doing. We're two likes away from 50, by the way. Three dots, boom, 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 like, 50, done, over. Don't have to talk about it anymore. But if that's true, does that necessarily fit what we're doing? And and my, my take is no. Your job is to protect Will Levis at the most prime spot on that line. And you don't have that guy right now. And that guy doesn't exist. Okay. This isn't the Eminem Santa Claus commercial where they look at each other and say, yes, they both exist. None of them exist. So the only where that exists is the draft and Tannenbaum give him credit. He knows that he actually spent five minutes on the Titans to actually do that because everybody from the outside doesn't realize that. But I'm telling you left hat. I I'm sorry if you do not agree with, and it's fine. It's your opinion, but left tackle. You cannot play football in the NFL for a long period of time without a left tackle. It's not possible in the league anymore. It's just not. And I get it. There's new rules and stuff, but those aren't going to change the fact that you don't have a left tackle. That kickoff rule is fine. XFL all for it, but it's not going to help you at tackle. And then you don't even have a right tackle. So it's like, what are you doing? you got to take a tackle. And that's the thing. Rand knows this. Rand's smart. He knows. He understands the process. And when he's going out doing all this free agency stuff, that's in the back of his mind. That's a no-brainer left tackle. Just telling you. Just telling you. Straight up. And if all these quarterbacks don't go one, two, three, Caleb Williams will go one. May will probably go two. But if the Patriots pass and they go somewhere else or think they can get J.J. later on in the draft, that's going to screw the Titans because some of these teams that need linemen might actually take some linemen. And then all of a sudden, now you're going to be stuck. You know, what are you going to do? You're going to take Latham at seven? Latham at seven? I, I thought this was an advertisement. What a waste. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? We skipped on Moss, not Marvin. We're not drafting a right tackle. Let John Robinson move. Actually, he drafted a real good right tackle, Mitchell. Um, Jack Conklin was amazing. Colts fans are delusional. 
Again, you act like building want everyone in the building wants alt. Again, Bill has told Brian, do not take alt. Maybe. But at the end of the day, it's not Callahan's job. He is not Vrabel anymore. Vrabel does not exist. Vrabel does not exist within the Titans organization anymore. This is all Rand's choice. And honestly, if you watch draft day, and we're going to start watching that once April hits. Draft day, one of my favorite movies, other than the whole like grandma, mom, or mom, dad thing in there with the ashes. But he's got a piece of paper, and he knows who he's taking the whole time. He's got the owner wanting him to take this. He's got the knucklehead coach wanting him to take this and showing him his Super Bowl ring from the Cowboys. At the end of the day, what he did, Kevin Costner in this situation, he was the one that knew that that was his opportunity. He's earned that GM role. Ran, if you're listening to this channel, which I know you are, buddy, take your guy. Take your guy. Don't listen to anybody else. Okay, don't listen to me. Don't listen to them. Whatever. Take your guy. And I think we would all applaud that. All right. Jared says, Caleb Williams is more woke than Kaepernick. I, I mean, Caleb Williams, the issue with me is he just thinks like he, like the whole medical thing. I mean, what are we doing? Only one in, in NFL history not to give up his medical information. I'm sorry, but like teams are investing a lot of money in you. They need to know. They need to know. Just like you want to know all this stuff and you want to dictate where you go and you threw the poor Chicago Bears under the bus multiple times, and now you're going to end up going to Chicago, and they're going to eat you alive if you're not good, man. I'll just tell you straight up. They don't put up with this. And, again, in Tennessee, I mean, I love y'all, and, and Titan fans are the best. But, again, living an hour and a half or two hours from Chicago – like, they think the 85 Bears are everything, and that's fine. The 85 Bears were good. But I'm telling you what, they will eat you alive. They're not as bad as Eagle fans, but they're they're up there. I mean, heck, I mean, when we were there, we were 10-0, and actually 9-0. and uh, It was snowing. Uh, we beat Jacksonville the next week during that 2008 season. And that was just with my dad, and my dad's a huge Bear fan. He had all his Bear stuff on. I saw the old Bear, uh, bear fans smuggling in uh, beer cans. Uh, coming out of their uh, long johns and all sorts of stuff. It was real cold. But I remember we won. It was not a great performance by the Titans, but we did end up winning. And I remember going back to the car or whatever, and I had some Bear fans get in my face and want to fight me, all because I was wearing a Titans coat. So, I mean, Bear fans are crazy. But at the end of the day, man, Caleb Williams, mm, you better you better show up. We wouldn't be surprised if the Titans pull two trades in the draft, pick up Swap, and then maybe Burks. And, that, and that's a good point, too. He's uh, Jeremy says he's optimistic. So that's the first scenario. What makes it even more interesting, and I'm going through the whole thing, we'll stop there, but at number 11, they got the Minnesota Vikings basically giving um, everything up to move up to 11 and giving the Cardinals Kyler Murray. I'm sorry, the Cardinals trade up with the Vikings at 11. And um, the Cardinals give up Kyler Murray and pick 66 to take um, the, the quarter. I'm sorry. The Vikings take the quarterback, right? Oh, no, no. The Cardinals take it. They take the spot 11. I'm so, I'm all whacked out. Okay. So the Cardinals trade Kyler Murray and pick 66 for the Vikings pick 11. There it is. So the Vikings get their quarterback because I don't think they're going in the year with Sam Darnold. He's a backup guy, and that's what they're going to do. But uh, to get Kyler Murray in Minnesota, that would be – I don't think that really does much for the needle, but – I mean, for Vikings fans, I'm not sure how you feel about that. All right. So we'll put that one aside again, going back to it one more time. Uh, the Tennessee. Oh, did I tell you the Tennessee Titans? Were, oh, I did tell JC Latham with the Titans for number seven, according to um, Tannenbaum from ESPN. Okay. And then again, the first part of it, there was his first part. Again, JJ McCarthy, I kind of went off on that. I, I don't see that happening. I just don't see him in the top 10. I think that's a smoke screen. Hopefully the, the Chargers don't take Joe Alt, but I think the idea of a team knowing the Titans need, and if they want Alt and they want to go get their guy, and maybe Rand doesn't want to go get his guy, maybe they will jump the Titans and take Joe Alt. That would be a catastrophe, I think. That I'm not going to shy away from that. All right, moving on. So the next one we got is pro football focus. We picked them this week. We'll pick two ones next week. We'll make this a thing on Tuesday Night Lights. 
So pro football focus goes Caleb Williams one, Drake May two, Daniels three. So those are the same. They are not getting off the soapbox of Marvin Harrison Jr. at number four, keeping Kyler Murray, giving them some weapons there and taking them four. But they got these stupid shenanigans again with the Vikings moving up with the Chargers, which would be great for us, and taking J.J. McCarthy from Michigan. I, it's a, oh my God, everybody's in on this thing. Oh my gosh. You can't, I mean, oh, whatever. Jared said, gotta be a smokescreen. I think this is a smokescreen. And Adam says uh, Vince Young got the blank knocked out from the movie Friday, right? Great, great movie, by the way. Okay, great movie, by the way. Uh, I wish it was, language was better, but it was funny movie, funny movie for sure. So this is prime spot. Alt still there, Fashano still there, uh, Neighbors still there, the Giants still got that pick ahead of you. Maybe a team wants to trade up, jump Atlanta jump the bears because a lot of people think the bears are going wide receiver. There's some good wide receivers still on the board. Dallas Turner there. If you need a pass rusher, um, obviously we talked about Fashano. We got, uh, I mean, also Fawaga's there. Some of you like Fawaga. <sighs> Donze from Washington. So, so there's a lot of talent still obviously on the board, but most importantly, your guys there, Joe Alt. So, we look up the second part of this, boom, Malik Neighbors goes, the wide receiver at six, Titans get their pick, uh, Dallas Turner, he goes to Atlanta, Adonze goes to uh, the Bears, Fawaga ends up going to the Jets. So now all the ultimate question is, is it going to be Fashanu, or is it going to be Alt, or is it going to be a wild card? Okay, if you know this and have already looked it up, then you already got it. Again, we we did hit the 200 mark. Just love the 200, 200 people in the poll. That's a pretty good number. Okay, that's a pretty good number to figure this thing out. But again, number seven, where are the Titans going? Where are they going at seven? Where are they going? You know where they're going. Because this is this, this, this real. This is going to happen. 100% sure. Actually, I said 99.9 because .9, someone could screw it up. But you guessed it. They going with Fashanu? No. They're going with Joe Alt. Joe Alt is the pick here for the Titans and Pro Football Focus. Again, they had a trade 11 and 23 from the Vikings to move up to take J.J. McCarthy. I don't see that happening. I think that's fool's gold, whatever. But in this case, they're going, the Tennessee Titans at seven would end up going Joe Alt. Again, I would feel better about the Titans. I just would. Right now I'm feeling better, but I would feel even more better if that's a word. If the Titans get a left tackle, because you guys are saying pick 38, you guys can do a lot of stuff. And that's totally true. Alexander says, upload. Where do you stand with Bowers? That's a good question. You know, I, I'll be doing a short on Bowers, but Bowers to me, and I, I've been on the record of saying this, I am not solely in love with a Conquo. Like he's on my soundboard. He's on my soundboard and stuff, which is cool. But when it comes to, again, to Conquo, like, he improved throughout the season, but there's just too many times there, uh, a big play, he's wide open, and he get a big first down and drops the ball. Like, he can improve still. I think Callahan, you got to give him credit, got to give him an opportunity to work with these guys. But I think the Titans obviously are missing that true tight end. Like, Conquo is okay. But you remember like back in the day when we had Jonu Smith and Jonu Smith would show signs and then he would just not show up for three games straight. But then he'd come back and, and run a pitch out sweep against the Texans for like 70 yards and look like Derrick Henry or play out of his mind against the Ravens in the playoff game going up and making that touchdown catch in the corner of the sideline or whatever in Baltimore. And then there's other times he just disappears. He was huge in that block for that 99-yard run for Derrick Henry. I love Jonu Smith. I'm not paying Jonu Smith as much as he got, and he ended up going to uh, New England, and he didn't really do well there because Henry did. Hunter Henry did way better. But I think the Titans having an opportunity to take a tight end, that's a game changer, and I think Bowers is. I would be open for it. But the only issue is I'm not really open for that at seven against Joe Alt. Because 
Tight end is something that I think maybe we can finally figure out at some point or we can work around that. But you cannot work around not having a left tackle. Like, you just can't do it. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, – okay, here's one for you. Like, for example, like you could get these brand-new rims on your car um, or you could get like um, – maybe that's a terrible analogy. How about just brand new, um, brand new tires? No, that's that's terrible. I got to think of something better. That, that's awful. Brand new rims. I'll go back to the rims. See, your first thoughts always the best. Brand new rims, or getting brand new tires. Like if your tires and you have no tread on your tires, I don't give a darn about what your rims look like. Because at the end of the day, like, you're not going to be able to go that much further on those tires. They're not safe. Eventually, you're going to get in an accident. And maybe I'm only talking about my own car right now that has over 200,000 miles and the tires are crap. And I need upgrades on the tires. I need an oil change. I'm just trying to get through spring break and then figure it all out. But my car is, it's it's lasted. It's, it's done its job. It's, 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 like I said, had it since 2013. It's over, it's 11 years old now, okay? that That's impressive for me, who used to trade in cars like every three years. But my point is, what's more important at the time, your tires or your rims? And I think when you look at this analogy, your left tackle is your tires, everything else are rims. You can't play football without a left tackle. You can have all the best toys in the world, you just can't do left tackle. You, I mean, you got to have a left tackle. So that's that's where I would go. Now, if Taylor Lewan, which I saw, I, I've had some guys that go to the combine, said they saw him there. Like, Taylor Lewan, he's, like, got no weight left. Like, that guy's going to retire. Like, I, he's all in on busting with the boys. They had 5 million views, by the way. I got to throw this out. This is, this is an interesting stat. I was doing some research. Busting with the boys had 5 million views in the last 30 days. And they gained 1,000 subscribers. 1,000 subscribers. Okay. My point is, like, 5 million views, 1,000 subscribers. Like, they are what they are. And, like I said, when it comes to Lawan, like, that is going to be his – that's what he's doing. That's where his time is. And that's fine. But playing professional football, maybe he leaves the door open, but the guy has lost so much weight, I just cannot imagine him ever coming back. So he should probably just retire. And, and I love Taylor Lewan. I mean, when he was on the Titans, I mean, he was a good left tackle. That's my point. When he wasn't on, you really needed to plug and play, guys. I know Dennis Kelly did an okay job at I mean, Dennis Kelly actually did a really good job at right tackle. <clears throat> but, again, not having a left tackle really does hurt. So, I'm going to get some more of your comments here. We're about done with the show. We've went uh, an hour and 20 minutes here on live. We have 84 of you watching. We have 59 likes. Appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And let's keep this thing going. Pan Jared says, Panic of the Disco, former uh, now Incubus, bassist. Okay. Draft day, epic Kevin Costner movie. Nick says, Caleb Williams is going to be a going to be a bear after field. Yeah, for sure. 100% sure. Upload, are you talking about the same Jack Conklin John traded away? Yeah. He seemed to like, and he tried to do the Patriot thing. Hawkins, what's up? Daddy Carthon, let's go. Check out the de definition of incubus. Scary stuff. If the Bears, for some reason, don't take Williams, he is still, uh, he could still slide like Levis did. Um, super chat again from Leon. Shout out again to Leon. He says 218 polls, but only 39 likes. Come on, peeps. Appreciate the support, man. And being a member. Appreciate it. And a moderator. Doing a jack of all trades. Uh, again, back to the poll. 241. It says, who did ran? Who just ran want? Who does he want? 100%. You know you got a guy. When you guys go and play fantasy football, it's the same way. You have a guy you know you want to take. He may not be there, but there's a guy you go in knowing you're going to take if he's there. Who's Rand's guy? Dallas Turner, 19%. Uh, neighbors, the wide receiver, 20 Uh Fashanu, 7 I'm shocked on that. A lot of you out on Fashanu. And Joe Alt, 55%. Maybe because he's on the thumbnail. I don't know. We got into two, exposing two of these mock drafts. First one, Tannenbaum. We're exposing the J.J. McCarthy thing. 
and I'm exposing them taking a right tackle at seven. I don't see that happening at all, and I will stand on the rooftop and shout that out and tell you all that is not going to happen. According to me, no. No, 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 no. Nor do I want them to take a right tackle. Now, if they want to trade back and then get a right tackle, fine. But you, you took a left guard last year, for crying out loud, and pick 11. Taking a right tackle at seven. I know they took Conklin. I think they traded back up to eight with the Giants, I want to say. Was it eight? Maybe it was nine. I think it was eight. Maybe seven. I think it was eight. So I, I know it's happened. And, and I like Conklin. But this is a different draft now. And you had Lawan. You had a left tackle. There's a difference. You don't have a left tackle. No way you're taking right tackle at seven. Maybe later on. Um, and then, like I said, again, 244. Keep voting on that poll. We'll read it out one more time. Again, this is a great, great, great way to whatever. So, a couple things floating out there. Number one, shout out to the 145 Club. If you guys are all watching, a lot of you in the house right now, it's okay to leave a comment on the short. If you don't like the short, let me know. Okay, let me know. But first one's done in the books. Alt. Next one's going to be Kool-Aid. And, and a lot of these mock drafts, Kool-Aid's now going in the first round. So I'm trying to give you guys that I think the Titans can get and have a possible option. Um, I know they just traded for a cornerback, but again, you know, you can't have enough corners. But And he can return kicks, which is kind of a cool thing too. So again, a lot of guys the Titans can go, a lot of different directions, a lot of videos we got to make here. But... Again, we, we went over these mock drafts. Tannenbaum had the Titans taking Latham at seven. And then Pro Football Focus had the Titans taking Joe Alt at seven. The Chargers were the wild card in the first one, which we kind of exposed that. And then in the other side, the Chargers traded out with the Vikings. Actually took uh, J.J. McCarthy at five. So a lot of people have them going in the top ten. I'm not. Yeah. Mitchell says Rand's not training. I got to catch back. I'm sorry, guys. I got to go all the way down here. Uh, Latham rising is fake news. Smoke screen monster. The Ravens are danger. I agree with you. And with having King Henry over there, Luke, just trade down and draft Brock. Why draft the wide receiver? Bowers is there, says Luke. Lewis says, what if the wide receiver in seventh and the O tackle in the 38th? That that's, that's fine. But Lewis, I think the issue for me would be, there's no guarantee that that person's going to exist at 38 and here's your opportunity you're a hundred percent cash in card you're a winner baby you're taking home a million bucks why in the world would you hold on to that ticket or i don't know try to double your money or whatever you're doing and then it all could blow up in your face i'm just saying because you just you there's nobody else at left tackle guys there's just nobody else and you got a for sure, for sure thing at left tackle. It's for sure thing. It's 100% going to happen. Unless he gets hurt, knock on wood, Joe Alt is exactly what you need. You need a pass blocker to protect Will Levis. He still can be really effective in the run game. Again, when you talk about it, he's got a great awareness level. He's got some quick feet. He's athletic. Um, he's physical, he's big, 6'8", whatever, 322, 6'9", 322. Uh, yeah, I get it. You know, occasionally, you know, you beat him and he has trouble catching up a little bit, but you know what? Just don't get beat, Joe Walt. And again, four sacks and 1,100 snaps in his career. At, those are passing snaps. Those aren't just total snaps. Those are passing snaps, four sacks given up. And over the last two years, 777 some snaps, pass snaps. He's only given up one sack, one very smart play. You need smart players on the offensive line and nothing against Dylan Radins, but that guy is like, he's not smart either. And the only reason why I'm not saying he's not smart is for the fact of how many stupid penalties the guy gets when he does play. So you want a guy that's can fit those things and protect your prize. I mean, if you had a kid then shout out to all the parents out there, shout out to if you raise your hand, if you're a parent somewhere, Got grandkids. Shout out to the people like 65 and older watching this. Shout out to you. And shout out to the young ones who just got their whole life ahead of them. And they're living life, man. They're, they got to have the dreams are in front of them. Shout out to them too. But the point is, aren't you going to protect your kids at all costs with the best that you can? Aren't you going to do that? 
and the Titans have a kid. And the kid's name is Will Levis. Okay? He's just, he's just like a little, little baby buck. And, and he's he's shown a lot of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Like, he can take that sleigh to the promised land. He showed that against Atlanta. But at the end of the day, like, Will Levis is still a young guy. He's still a young pop. Got to protect him. Can't just throw him out in the wild and have him defend himself all the time because eventually he's going to do too much and get whacked, and then all of a sudden he's going to be hurt. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, not fine. Adam says it's possible that the Titans fool everyone taking an unexpected player at seven and move Skronsky at left tackle. Now, they if you believe everything they say, they say that's absolutely not happening, and they've even come out and said that he's not playing left tackle. But I agree with you. A lot of fake stuff going on right now. Can you really believe anything they're saying? Oh, my gosh. Luke says, how do you feel about trading Traylon and Chig? I, again, if you trade a Conquo, I don't know who's out there for him. I'm sure there would be somebody, but I don't think you're going to get a whole lot. And I'll be honest, you're not getting much at all, at all for Traylon, at all. Now, again, I, I, I went through this last time, Traylon Burks, or Floyd Reese would always say, you do your due diligence on these guys. Like GMs have folders, file folders, probably a lot of folders online now, but but folders where they can just go to these guys they used to scout. And somebody might have had a crush, like I said, on Traylon Burks. And they feel like, hey, I if I get him, I know I can do this. I can fix it. And a lot of us do this too. I remember back in the day when uh, I took over a girls basketball program and I'm like, oh, man, like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And I I'm, it's like, I was just so excited to have that opportunity to have that job. I mean, I was working my whole life for that point to be a head varsity coach. And I remember I had a great assistant coach. Shout out to Dave. He was amazing. Okay, I, I wouldn't have done anything without Dave. But the point I'm trying to make is, like, you just you have everything that you think is going to happen. You have everything that you think you're going to touch and you're going to fix, and every move you make is going to work out, and everything's going to be great. And what I found out is that was something that um, did not go well at all. The one thing I, I can at least say that I did was I never went away from the values. So I know the, the, those girls worked their butts off. Okay, the, those girls worked. Their, they were they gave everything. Um, the problem was like when you don't have a lot, of, you know, like we didn't have a lot of ball handlers. So teams would press us. We couldn't get across half court. Uh, there's one team that was beating us 40 to uh, 40 to nothing at the end of the third quarter. And you got to go and look at your team knowing they're trying their hearts out. And what are you saying? We end up losing like 66 to eight in that game. But that's my point. So I feel like having an opportunity we feel, some GM might feel that they can fix Traylon Burks and they can make it work putting their hand on it and, and ma doing a magic wand. But other than that, yeah, we're probably not going to get much for him. Monster Matt says, crazy. Luke says, I don't understand what happened to the drafting the highest rated player on the board. Was left guard the position we needed the most uh, target last year? I agree with you. I mean, Skronsky needs to be an all, not an all pro, but a pro bowler. And if he's not, it was a waste to pick. It was. What if Raiden's false starts are caused too much Red Bull? Uh, the paint Kings in the house. Let's go Cowboys. You're going to shout out. Let's go Cowboys. Cowboys have done absolutely nothing. Didn't even give Derrick Henry an offer. And he lives in their backyard. It's like most offensive lines says monster Matt are the parents and their quarterbacks are the kids. Jared said we gave up a 2025 third round pick for Snead. We aren't going to be able to get anything for Burks. Uh, Chill Mode said if we trade Chig, you might as well pin in Bowers at seven and forget anything else. Uh, Hawkins says with the new kick return rules, Burks come back as a returner, get him open more space like in college. Upload, how does somebody get into coaching? I think it would be helpful to strategy game planning. Like, are you, what kind of coaching did you want to get into, Jared? I mean, I, I used to not coaching anymore, unfortunately. Um, but that past two seasons, I coached junior high. I ended up getting second in the conference, won a huge trophy. Was, I think I put that on the community page. Um, but no, that was a blast, dude. And then having an opportunity to coach my son, totally. Was I the best coach in the world? No. I love those kids. 
And um, like I said, uh, having an opportunity to come back and coach junior high basketball compared to varsity, I mean, it, it's it's a lot different. You know, it, it is a lot different. Um, but at the end of the day, man, coaching's coaching's awesome. So um, if you have any questions or comments, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. Lumen says, remember these hidden talents draft beyond the list. My opinion. Oh, it's good. They're, I mean, they could take someone that's probably all of us. They could take someone that uh, you have no idea who they're going to take. And I feel like we've done that before, right? Uh, let's see. Sack says, if Joe Alt and Bowers are both available seven, do you think we would consider take? No. And, and no, not against you, Sack. I'm just talking about Rand. I don't think there's any way he can sell that not having a left tackle and going out and getting Bowers. I just, I don't know, man. Well, you know, I don't like to give out too much. So I mean, if, if they do find it, they have to work to find it. You know what I mean? They got to find it on their own. So yeah, I'm not gonna trust me. I, I do make videos, um, for like orientations and stuff like that. And I always put my spin on it and use my programs and stuff. And I try to spice it up, but yeah, the bottom line, though, to be completely honest, uh, that's one of the reasons why I never did start a YouTube channel is because I just felt like I was getting made fun of all the time, not only by my wife and my own kids, but, but it just, oh, my gosh, can you imagine? It's not like a small high school, too. It almost got like a 1,000 kids, so it's not like, you know, it's, you know, everybody knows everybody kind of thing, you know, real small town of 500 people. Like, this, for me, it's a big high school. So um, bottom line, though, like, Again, Tom Grossi, he fought the fears a lot earlier than I did. And look where Tom Grossi's been, man. I mean, he's going to get 1 million subs at some point. He He's on his, the trajectory up. The dude gets 9,000 subs a month. During the football season, he probably doubles or triples that. Um, but he started as history teacher. And he went through the same thing. Now he doesn't teach at all. Like, he does YouTube full-time. I'd love to do YouTube full-time. I just, right now, I'm not, I can't, wouldn't be able to support because <laughs> insurance costs so much money. But uh, I, I would love to do that. Monster Matt's a Dolphin fan. Man, that was fun. Now, here's a true story. <clears throat> I know someone who um, works in the for the Dolphins. Um, thank you, thankfully to my daughter, um, who uh, I'm not going to give that away, but I, I will just say it revolves around my three-year-old daughter. There's someone who came into our life because of my three-year-old daughter who um, – has a family member who actually works for the Dolphins. So we found out that we would have an opportunity to go to a game. The only problem is, like, the Titans don't play the Dolphins in Miami this year. But um, if they ever do again, we just got to get plane tickets because, you know, Miami is like 22 hours or whatever from where I live, so it's kind of tough to drive there. But who knows? We'll figure it out. But uh, who's my favorite singer? Well, I'm going to get a lot of bonus points for this, but not for this reason. But I'm, I'm going to I'm going to give you my favorite. OK, and it's your job to go find him and, and find out who he is. But some of you will know. But a favorite singer, I'm going to say just because I want the people to come in for the views, because when I say something, it happens like a lot of times we get some mortgage people in because I'll talk about mortgage rates and stuff. Just kidding. So I'm going to say Taylor Swift. Just for the fact that we'll get a few people in the algorithm that will come in for Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. But in all honesty, my favorite singer is Lecrae. So, yeah, Lecrae's my favorite singer. He's a Christian rapper. He's amazing, man. If you give him a listen, I get it. I get it. It's not promoting religion. I'm, I'm not doing that. But what I'm saying is Lecrae, I mean, he's got a great story, too. He's got a great story. Grew up in a hard life, man, and overcame a lot and um, gives back so much. Again, I'm going to go with Lecrae. I'm going to go with Lecrae. So if you heard of Lecrae, great. If you haven't, that's fine. Titans Rossi says 10 new subscribers to the show. All right. I appreciate it, Titans Rossi. I appreciate it. All right. So now it's your feedback. It's your turn to end the show. Right now we uh trying to think of how much we've went. Hour 37. We'll go an hour and 45 minutes, and then we'll call it a night. Again, the three dots, boom, boom, boom. We're 77 watching. If you click those three dots, if you can, a like button will appear. If you could help us out and hit that like button, I appreciate it. 
Um, like I said, it'd be nice to get to 100 likes. I'm not going to beg, though, or anything, but it'd be nice. We're at 63. The poll question, you, you guys delivered tonight. You delivered. I just wanted 200 people in the poll. And you guys outdid yourself. 271 right now, almost 300. And my poll question to you was, what do you think Rand wants to 100% do? What do you think Rand needs to do? Who does Rand, who's Rand's guy? That's what I asked you. We got a new series coming up that we've done before. We're doing it again. It starts in April. So be ready for this. Pumping you up for draft week. And the, the it's basically, it's, I have to figure out a different title because the title doesn't always do well. But who's your guy? You guys can come in here as long as they're on the board somewhere. Who's your guy? I'll have the best draft guide out there. Comes out in a couple weeks. And, and this guy knows his stuff. It's well broken down. It's easy to understand. You don't need to like have like a masterful education when it comes to the world of football. Um, some of these guys, like they they know the insides and outs. Like again, I'll go back to the No Flags film. Like that dude, he knows football. Like he knows the game, inside and out. He would make a really good GM. Like I think I'm gonna go ahead and say that he's probably one that, out of all the different people that I've ever had on the show, <clears throat> he's probably one who could actually be a GM for what what he does and what he knows. So shout out to him. Uh, I, his name's now A to Z Film Room. Does an amazing job. So definitely go check him out. But like I said, it's a great show. It's a great opportunity. I'll get, I'm going to try. Okay, it's not easy, but I'm going to try. We do a call-in show. It's called Titan Upload. Um, oh, gosh, now I forgot what it, the, oh, my gosh, what the heck do we even call that anymore? It's been so long. Um my gosh, I felt totally like I'm having a brain toot. Oh, man, you guys know. Uh, I don't even know. Yeah, James Foster's his name. Could definitely be a scout. I, I There you go. Titan Upload Radio. There it is. I know it was real simple. I was, oh, my gosh, kept saying stupid stuff. But, yeah, Titan Upload Radio, where you have an actual chance to call in the show. Now, I got to get my son. I got to give him a boost here. Um, poor My poor kid, you know, like he tries to stay up. And I know there was someone out there mocking the channel about like if you watch Titan Upload Network, you know you'll you'll fall asleep. Give you a pillow, there you go, right? Like okay, whatever. Like it's funny. I I laugh at it. I I think it's hilarious. Um, and I honestly I don't know if I could listen to myself either. So I maybe I do believe I agree. Maybe maybe everyone I help everyone fall asleep. You know maybe I'm the perfect sleeping medicine without taking medicine, right? But the poor, the poor kid, like, he's got school in the morning and, like, you know, so he tries to stay up as long as he can, but he he needs he needs to go to sleep, true. Uh, Titans Ross, he says, Titan uploader. That's what it was. Rand wants uh, the quarterback from Washington. Rand is passing up neighbors. Luke McCaffrey, draft a kicker. Uh, Corley says, Lumen. Matt, subscribe. Appreciate you, Matt. Here you go. Hold on. Uh, there is. Yeah, you subscribe, let me know. I appreciate it. Uh, can you give me? Yeah, I gave you a shout out. We'll give you two shouts out. Thomas says, if a team in the top five, 15 offer the pick for Will Levis, would you take the trade? If so, would you draft at that spot? Oof. So basically, you're asking me in a way you're trying to. You're trying to creep around, just flat out asking me, right? It's fine. I get what you're doing here, Thomas. You're basically asking, hey, would you trade Will Levis to take one of these quarterbacks, obviously, other than probably Drake May and Caleb Williams? Because you don't you won't have the the and to get up to the top two for those guys. So would you take a guy like JJ McCarthy? Absolutely not. Not taking him. Would you take Jaden Daniels? I'm just gonna say this. I know it kind of, some people agree with this philosophy. Take a quarterback every year. Eventually you'll hit one. I'm going to say no, no, no. Like if I make a trade, I'm not trading Will Levis. So yeah, I, right now, Will Levis is off the table. Now, if Rand really loved Caleb Williams or Drake May and, you know, the commanders really loved Will Levis. I mean, that's Rand's call. I, I trust Rand and what he did. But me personally, yeah, I'm, I'm probably not doing that. Nope. 
How often do you buy jersey? Just got another Derrick Henry one. Someone's like, well, why would you get a Derrick Henry one? Well, number one, the Oiler uniforms are amazing. I was born in Houston. But number two, like they were like 70 bucks. They're like $200 jerseys on the gift shop, 70 bucks. That's like um keepsake. Does that make sense? Like that's a keepsake. So I probably won't even wear it that much. Maybe frame it. Maybe eventually run into Derek, get him to sign it, put it on the wall, those kind of things. Um, but yeah, I used to be big into buying jerseys. I went over this last show about like buying NBA jerseys. I used to do that all the time and the shorts when I was like in seventh, eighth grade. But lately, like, you know, every jersey I buy, it gets cursed. You know, I get a buyer jersey, gets traded. Uh, buyer jersey actually lasted a couple of years, though. Um, I'm trying to think of Corey Davis. I actually got that signed, and then that ended that, right? So um, I've done Finnegan in the past, and that kind of went away. Um, I've done um, – what else have I have? I'm trying to think of something more realistic uh, recently that happened. Well, I've had you know plenty of Mariota jerseys. That went south. Uh, let's see. Kendall Wright. I had him. Um, I had Lindell White. When I got him, then it kind of fall, fell apart. So, yeah, I think any Titans jersey that I end up getting usually ends up bad. So, hey, Freak Power, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Is Ryan still the quarterback? No, no one's picked up Ryan Tannehill. I'm shocked on that. He's not that bad. It's kind of crazy, though. Stop the Will Levis talk. $70 for a jersey still, even if it's Derrick Henry. Now, Ryan Tannehill on the gift shop is still like 100 freaking 70 bucks. I don't know what they're doing with that one, but you can keep your Ryan Tannehill Titans jersey for 170 bucks because I don't want it. Would you trade Levis for Tua? No, I would not. Tua, Tua's good. I like Tua, but Tua, Nashville is the weather just – and, again, Tua came to Nashville once and was awful because it was raining. Like, the weather does affect him. And if I was Tua, I'd get my new contract if the Dolphins aren't going all in for me. I'm probably going to look at a dome team. Oh, I forgot. The Titans are getting a new stadium in 2027. And it's going to be a dome. Oh, my gosh. I totally forgot. I fell right into that one. I'm just kidding. I still wouldn't trade him. Uh, Chill says, but here's the kicker. Levis hasn't been in the offense that's coming. That's a good point. But I just don't think – I think part of the reason why they went the direction they went, if – if let's flip-flop Malik Willis for Will Levis. Will Levis gets drafted by John Robinson. Maybe there is something to that. But because Rand not only got Will Levis, but traded up to get Will Levis, and we don't know. We don't know. Like, was Vrabel the one that wanted CJ? Was Vrabel the one that did not want CJ? That's the question. I don't know the answer to that. But I wish I did. I wish I did. Uh, we're at 281 on the poll. 54% alt still thinks that's the guy. Neighbors is creeping around 20%. Uh, and Turner's close, 19 and then 7% for poor Fashano. No chance we trade Will. Uh, you know what? There, there might be, uh, oh, my gosh. I'm not trying to be mean to chat sports titans, but they've floated a lot of quarterback stuff against the wall uh, during free agency. And some of the stuff I was like, come on. Like when Russell Wilson got uh, let go right away, it's like, oh, the Titans are, are the Titans getting uh, Russell Wilson? And it's like, come on. And I, there was some other quarterback they did that with. But I'm thinking, would someone be, I uh, wonder how the video would go if someone made a video, should the Titans trade Will Levis? That would be something I don't think I ever would do. Uh, there'd be a lot of fallout there. So uh, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to stay away from that one. Uh, goodwill Titans gear. LOL says Jared. Unlike the crawdads. Oh, Mitchell. <laughs> uh, Lumen says awesome. Fitted Titans hats at Burlington Coat Factory around ten dollars. They actually had Titan hats at Walmart. Um, about ten minutes from my house that one time. I remember I just was starting YouTube and uh, I, I posted that on the community page. It was kind of funny. I actually had guys who watched the channel from Rockford that came down to get the hats for Titans. Because they had them at Walmart. Uh, Sin City Titans. I see you up there, man. I keep missing you. Uh, perks of living in Nashville, Rossi. All buck stuff here. Uh, Jared. Oh, we already talked. Oh, about the clickbaits. I know. It's it's kind of. Uh, might need to grab me a couple, Rossi. And then uh, Lumen says, Kent, my friend, Woods. We love Kent Woods. 
We love Kent Woods. Shout out to Kent Woods. And we got the paint kid in here again. Uh, go Cowboys. Jacob says, I personally would like to get alt, but something tells me to take one of the best playmakers um, out of the top three wide receivers and get a tackle in the second. And again, you doesn't matter who you take if you don't have a left tackle and you're gambling everything that that left tackle exists at 38 and it goes your way. I just don't think you can do that. That's just my personal opinion, though. You guys know me. I mean, I, I would never get on your opinions. Again, this was a channel made for you, made for me to talk to you, but to hear your side and hear your takes. That's why this channel exists. Um, this is the channel that you are larger than me, and I truly mean that. Like, I take a lot of stuff that you say to heart. So I hope you um, believe that because it's true. Robert, unless the Titans sign even a replacement level left tackle, they cannot afford to pass on the one in the first round. If Pete's or Becton, you could at least think about it. That's a good point. And they, unfortunately they haven't done that. So that's the problem. Uh, chill mode says upload. Do you think, what do you think about linebacker 30? What's your take? I want to do a show on linebackers. All I can tell you right now at 38, I don't get enough consensus around that there's that linebacker worth taking at 38 that fits what you want. Again, I, this is not me ripping on Murray Jr. Like, not going to rip on Rain. I don't agree with it. I think Kenneth Murray Jr. had a good rookie year. He was okay, but but he he's not been good. He's been awful. And he, his run run stopping ability is 33 grade point. I mean, that's terrible. Um, his pass coverage grades awful. His rush in the quarterback is, it's probably his strong suit. So I, I get that they can find a role for him, but when you go back and you look at Titan linebackers, and I was thinking about this and talking about this to myself in the car, cause I'll do that every now and then. I know I'm weird, but I'm thinking to myself like, all right, Titans linebackers in the past, they've all had a specific duty. You know, let's go back. Um, David Long Jr. David Long Jr. got in the sixth round for West Virginia, undersized, right? I remember when he went in for Jalen Brown, who got Jalen Brown, who got hurt in the playoff game against Tom Brady, and David Long Jr. was getting picked apart early, but he learned. And the one thing David Long Jr. could do, even though he's undersized, Aaron Brewer, sorry, buddy, have fun in Miami, but he was undersized. The difference between Brewer and David Long Jr. was. David Long Jr. could do one great thing at West Virginia. If you forgot him, he went to Miami. I get it for $5 million. That was something I think Rand should have kept. I know he got hurt sometimes. But David Long Jr. could do one thing, and that was tackle. He was not afraid of anyone. He he would get in there with the, the, the largest of the large. And he was not intimidated by anybody. And David Long Jr. made plays. He did. He's a great tackler. Now, Jayon Brown was not the best tackler. He was one drafted, I believe, in the fifth round from UCLA, but he had a different role. He was great in coverage. He could take out running backs. Like when we played New England, and they always loved to play throw like, remember back in the day with Falk? Um, but that was their style. They would throw to the running back out of the flat, and that's how Brady would break you down. And Jayon Brown was great at covering that. He's great at doing a decent job on tight ends. Jayon Brown, that was his role. Then, like I said, Rashawn Evans came in. Rashawn Evans couldn't cover anybody. Like, he could not cover me. I do have some high school experience at wide receiver, by the way. Yeah, that's upload for you. But, okay, the point is he couldn't cover me. He was always out of whatever sorts turned around in the wrong place, trailing way behind. But Rashawn Evans could plug holes. If you had a fourth and one against the Baltimore Ravens, you got Lamar Jackson. They're going to go for it in a right in the beginning of the game on their own like 30-yard line. Any other time they kick the field goal, take the points, trust the defense. No Lamar and, and Harbaugh are going for it. Fourth and one. 
It's guys like Rashawn Evans that step up and plug that hole. We saw that in a goal line situation against the Bucs, against the Chargers. He Terrible coverage, but amazing at just plugging holes. So they, they all find their little area that they're good at, and that's how they excel. Right now, we got Dr. Gibby. The, honestly, I don't know what that guy can do well, but he's like, he's a guy. And you won six games last year, and I'm like I'm saying, I, I, Dr. Gibby did okay. But you definitely can upgrade there, right? Kenneth Murray Jr. can get after the quarterback, fine. But he can't really cover, and he can't really plug holes and, and, and tackle. So that's an issue. Ask Charger fans if you don't believe me. So Rand's got to figure out something he can do. So maybe that guy does exist. That's why I'm saying I need to break down more than just, hey, is this guy good or not? Because it, a lot of times it comes at what they fit within us. We can have favorites. We can have favorites. But at the end of the day, do they fit what we're trying to do? And the guy who fits the best on offense is Joe Alt because you're trying to protect Will Levis and allow him to throw it deep. Throw it deep. Get your speed guy at 38. Get your speed guy at 38. That's what you can do. Um, wouldn't be surprised if we trade back and we can get good value. Got to have a trade partner, though, Billy, but I totally understand. Robert says, I think you go defensive tackle in the second. See what Reese uh, can do for you. Uh, hopefully, he can call a defense with a good D-line and a stellar back, and you can get away with being below average linebacker group. But, again, Totally agree with you, Robert, with defensive tackle, defensive line, but right now that's an issue too. So that really has me scared because I think we do have a really good secondary, and I think we're missing a piece in safety, and that's fine. And I'm hoping uh, Amani Hooker can be healthy this year for once. I love him. Great fourth-round pick out of Iowa, but, again, I, I he does a lot of the great things when he plays well um, when he's out there. But I think at the end of the day, like, you you can't stop the run at this point. That scares me. And you also can't protect the passer to a full degree either. So Rand, hopefully this draft works out, but you you got to believe he's got a plan. Every defense pretty much has hybrid these days. That's true. Uh, started at safety, moved to linebacker. That's a great way to win in Madden, by the way. It's a little cheat code for you. Wink, wink, wink. Chill mode says I can always go with James Williams. He's a hybrid safety. What wide receiver would you draft at 38? Well, again, when you're talking about wide receivers, what are they doing well? And to be honest, what about the guy from Texas? Fast, can get deep, ran well at the combine. I mean, if he's sitting there, maybe you think about him. But from what I've heard, there's a lot of guys – that are going to be right around that 38 spot that are going to have a little bit of speed. So I, I think that gives you um, a little opportunity. I don't know if they'll be there. Mitchell says inside linebacker Watson in the sixth round Mississippi state. See, I love that. And, and if we go back and do when we do the show, like who's your guy, Mitchell could come on here and this is how this works. It's so cool. They do it up at 670 to score out of Chicago. They've done it for years. It's, it's amazing. Of course that's on the radio. So we can do, hopefully do well here, but Mitchell could come in and say, Hey, linebacker, Nathaniel Watson out of Mississippi state. And then what would happen was I look at my cheat sheet draft guide that I trust. And then I read the strengths. I read what round he's supposed to go in. And I think I might even give you a comp an NFL comp and then talk about a few weaknesses and give the credit where credits due. by the way, because they're doing all the work, but I definitely give them credit. But I just kind of go over the highlights or cliff notes, if that makes sense. Of course, AI is going to destroy all of us. But at the end of the day, like AI still isn't up to date 100%. They're still a little bit behind. So as far as time goes, that's why with sports, it's, hey, I could say, hey, what are the top 10 Titans needs? And it's going to give me the top 10 Titan needs from like 2022, which ain't going to help me very much. Can you talk about the Dolphins? I'm sorry, I'm lost. Sure, I just did talk about the Dolphins. Talk about Aaron Brewer, your new center, and your inside linebacker from West Virginia, David Long Jr. If you want to know about those guys, I got you covered. Got you covered. Uh, Monster Matt. Jacob said, I'll trade up for Lad McConkey from the, the wide receiver. Now, he would be interesting because he plays can play that slot guy that you want Kyle Phillips to be. 
but this guy can do it better. So he was really good at Georgia. I thought so. Hawkins 10 to 15 is what I was thinking. Hard to see in the scenario we get him. Oh, he's talking about Dallas's top 10 15. Williams. He's slated to go to the sixth round, but it sounds like a great form. Yeah, it will be fun. It'll be a blast. We do it a couple times. And like I said, it, it gives you guys, it's just all about you, not about me. And you guys just point me in a direction and, and off we go. I'll have my son, the producer, helping me uh, talk about this guy. Maybe even invite some of the guys on the network to help as well. It's it's a lot. It's a blast. Williams said, just tune in, re repeat everything. I will, and then I got to go. Uh, Goodman says, tighten up. Hey, definitely help. Last time I was say, I promise you, last time I was say, three dots, boom, boom, boom. Hit those. Hit that like button. Help us get to at least 70, right? I said 100. You're like, yeah, 66 upload is all you're going to get from us. Appreciate those too, by the way. Um, and then if that red button exists, I, I change it blue, but I can't, right? But if the red button, and then that's not a political thing, not at all. I'm not getting into politics with y'all, but blue for the Titans, right? But yeah, if you see that blue button or the red button popping at you, said the, the subscribe, please hit that. I, I, I'd love that. And then also we got two votes away from 300 in the poll. So at least you can make that happen, right? So you can make that happen. I know you can give me two more uh, polls. We got two nine. I just need one more of you. See, I knew you would come through on that one. So the poll question was, what do you think ran? Who's this guy? hundred percent that he's going to this draft and he wants to get Dallas Turner. 19% neighbors is uh 19%. So that's tied. And then he's got that. You guys got Joe alt 55%, which I actually would agree with. And Fashano getting only 7%. And you're still holding out because you're still only at 299. You got me the 70 likes. Can you get me the 300 votes? Can you do it? Poll question. Can you give me one more poll answer to get us the 300 and allow me to go to bed? Can you do it? You did it. Amazing. Shout out to you guys. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Amazing. We did it. We did it. You did it. Here we go. Recap. And then we're out of here. All right. So recap, here's what we got. We'll go all the way back to the beginning. Go all the way back to the beginning. Plugging out the 145 Club. Again, let me know what you think of the logo. I just kind of made it, so I like it. I think it's cool. It's got uh, it's got the black outline, but the uh, the original does not. I just had to have to pop off the, the red backdrop. But like I said, um, it's more like a water thing it'd probably be better off in the summer you know like we you know water slides and stuff but whatever um also speaking of water i'm gonna go back to the main screen i just got to do this i appreciate it um to just let me give me one minute here but can can i say prayers to uh everybody involved in what happened at 1 30 um in the morning yesterday in baltimore um you know i have all these uh, some baltimore people in there um I know the bridge will eventually get, you know, Francis Scott Key Bridge, you know, a lot of history there. Uh, I've been on that bridge before, um, but to see that happen and, and to go back and watch that video is so tragic and watching that bridge just collapse. But knowing there are um, six people right now, maybe more, um, that that's, that's hard. You know, I, I can't imagine waking up you know, two, three, four in the morning and, and hearing the news and, and then spending all day trying, they're trying to find these people and um, they just don't turn up. So again, everybody in the Baltimore community, now that we'll have to change plans, buses go different directions, kids having, uh, instead of, you know, 25 minutes to 30 minutes to getting to school may now have to spend an hour on the bus or, you know, all those people at work that got to take different. I know that's all after the fact of lives lost and stuff. I, I totally understand it. But Baltimore has to keep going. Um, Baltimore has to wake up in the morning and still go to work and still do things, daily things, you know. And, and not having that bridge now um, that connects is, is, is tough. But knowing what happened, a freak accident like that, I'm assuming it was an act. I mean, man, so prayers for Baltimore and that community. Um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, back. It's hard to transition off of that, but we'll put uh, Mitchell on there for sure. We definitely prayers for Baltimore. So, again, we just talked about we're going to start doing this every Tuesday night lights. We're talking about the mock drafts. 
Our two that we picked today were Mike Tannenbaum. I think it was Mike Tannenbaum from ESPN, former GM. I believe the GM from the Dolphins. He came out with a, a, a mock. And then we had the Pro Bowl or Pro Football Focus. We did that one too, top 10. And what we noticed in this Tannenbaum one that kind of upsets me and scares me a little because Joe Alt ends up getting taken before seven. And I'm just telling you, my heart, my gut, my feeling, my eye that's destro- totally messed up. I just believe that the Titans really want Joe Alt. And, and that's Rand's guy. And if we learned anything about Rand over the last four or five days, Rand wants, when he wants a guy, he will do everything in his power to go get that guy. And I feel like he stole Ridley away from Jacksonville and New England. He he pulled a fast one on the Colts and the Chiefs bringing in Snead. Like, he will go get his guy. Unfortunately, last year his guy was Andre Dillard, but I'm just kidding about that, kind of. But Joe Alt being off the board, we kind of got into would you trade up? Do you think he'll trade up? Do you think he will be the Bears back in the day when they were trading against themselves with San Francisco for three and two to go get Mitch Trubisky when nobody else wanted him but the Bears? I don't know. That's that's the story that came out. Uh, moving on, uh, then the next one we talked about, bam, Tannenbaum, uh, six through ten. According to Tannenbaum, neighbors six, and then Harrison Jr. nine to the Bears won the draft by by sure by far. Fashano fell to ten, and then the Tennessee Titans take J.C. Latham right tackle at seven, which I expose that is not going to happen at seven. Even though I I think he's a good player and he fits well, but I don't think he fits well with what we want right now. We want a pass protector at the most prime elite position that we don't have, and he's not out there. So that's why I'm going left tackle. Um, there also was a trade in this at 11 where the Cardinals traded up with Minnesota. Minnesota gets the quarterback, Kyler Murray, in a 66 pick, and the Cardinals end up getting whoever they wanted at 11. I don't remember who they took. So if you're a Cardinals fan, I, I will do better. Then we got pro football focus. A little different direction. Cardinals not going quarterback and foregoing with Harrison Jr., not coming off of that. But then the Vikings coming out of nowhere and trading up to grab J.J. McCarthy. Again, if you go back and watch, you should probably won't. But if you did, you would know I go off on J.J. McCarthy and saying that is not happening in the top 10. I am not a buyer in that. I think that's all smoke and that's not happening. And I'm going to stand by those words. So, again, I think Rand's going to take a, 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 tack, a left tackle. But I also know that. J.J. McCarthy, I just don't feel good about anybody trading up for him. I just don't see it. I I just don't. Maybe they trade up later. I don't know, but not in the top 10. I'm not. Everybody's doing it now. It's the new thing. Everybody wants to do it, but I'm not. I'm not going to join that party. So then who do the Titans take if Neighbors has gone at six? Joe Alt's still there. Fashano's still there. Um, You know, Bowers is still there. Where are they going, Upload? And we... According to Pro Football Focus, would have went. They went with Joe Alt, and it would make me excited. It would make you excited. I think with three fourteen in the poll, but that was the show, you know, and uh, it was fun. It was a fun show. We will do this every Tuesday night. Next Tuesday, if you got a comment, please, 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 if you got a comment about what mock drafts you want me to kind of break down next time, we won't use these two again. We'll, we'll pick two different ones to pick from. Let me know. Let me know. I listen. Trust me. You leave a comment. I listen. Uh, last comment. Then we're out of here. Maybe we'll go to the different camera. Let's go with top tier. Thanks for being a member. It says zero chance Harrison Jr. falls to nine. I would never pass on Marvin Harrison Jr. or neighbors at seven. I'm just telling you straight up top tier. You are a member. Much respect to you. Okay, you even get applause for being a member and your support for the network. Okay? All right. But in order to throw the ball to those guys, you need to have Will Levis be able to throw it to them. Unless you're going to run screens all the time. You're going to do the Todd Downey, run it back with Downey. But you're not. So at left tackle, you need a left tackle. That guy does not exist. I will just... Oh, my gosh. Yell from the mountain. Maybe I'll come out with a new video, an intro. I'll go find a mountain, which probably doesn't exist in Illinois anywhere, but I'll go somewhere and just just shout it out. 
And maybe y'all can hear me. Probably not. But the point is I am not taking anybody other than a left tackle unless Fashano and Alt are off the board at seven. Then we're open for business. And I'm not going to overvalue anybody else just to overvalue them. Then I'm, I'm trusting my board. But there's one position in this draft that we can solidify for not this year, not next year, not the year after, not the year after that. I'm talking the next 10 years, as long as you're going to pay them, the next 10 years. We do not have to worry about left tackle. All these teams will be worrying about left tackle at some point. Even the old Colts will be worried about left tackle, not the Titans, for 10 years. And then we can start taking other parts. But if you don't give me that left tackle, it's just like the rim and the tire. That tire needs to be replaced. I get it. The rims look nice. They add pop. They add spark to the car. But I got to get tires before I get the rims. And I'm getting the tire. They might be boring. They might be you know, whatever. But those are going to be good tires. And those tires are going to last years. Years. So, yeah, that's why I'm going with what I'm going. Hey, Luis, thank you so much. I, I love pot. I get negative support sometimes. People will come in here and, and and give the dislike and tell me all the things I'm not doing well. I mean, you guys don't do that. But those positive vibes, you guys, I mean, th those mean the world to me, and I appreciate it. All right. I think that's it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and put the cue to the music up here a little bit. Uh, I appreciate it. We'll leave it at Sin City Titan. He says, tighten up, night all. Hey, and he's up late, by the way. I think I'm up late. Sin City Titan is like uh 12:30 over where he's at. And again, shout out to our guy Leon. Wouldn't be a, a show without Leon coming in and giving us some super chats. So we appreciate the heck out of him. And again, one more time, the poll, I'll, I'll screenshot it after the show, put it on the community page. If you are a, a member of the 145 Club, I did post a video yesterday. Um, and like I said, Kool Aid will probably come out tomorrow. And then upload's going to take a little bit of a. He's going to take a little bit of a, the advice from some of those people that say he's putting us to sleep. I'm going to take that advice and actually get some sleep. How about that? I'm going to get some sleep tomorrow night. I believe Titans Rossi is going to be live. It's going to be awesome. Um, but at the end of the day, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back. And again, we'll just mark it down. We got into the poll question with the shorts live and just begin the show. Wasted 10 minutes on that. But we asked you, 142 of you, you guys said you like the wide show better than the shorts. So upload live. It'll stay wide. And Tuesday night lights will be fit to the shorts category and we'll leave it at that again poll question 53 percent of you 53 percent of you saying joe alt 322 voted who you think rand's going to i'm still shocked for shano at seven so take care you guys have a great day tighten up whether it's the regular season or the off season we have you covered as we give you the best Tennessee Titans and NFL news and insight that a fan could ask for. You're watching the Titan Upload Network.